right and we're live and so i'm doing this a little bit different this time i'm sitting in my car and i figured hey the heck let's do something a little bit more impromptu a little bit more live so earlier today i was sitting in the waiting room with my wife uh, at an ob appointment because we have a baby due and i was thinking like wow i do all this complex content on fasting and stuff but I, a lot of times i just miss the boat in terms of just doing really simple beginner content so Today's live broadcast is geared to be a little bit more of a Q&A and geared to be helpful to cover some very beginner type stuff. Okay, we're gonna cover common beginner intermittent fasting mistakes because quite honestly, they're common, okay? So I'm excited to have a lot of people hopping on here. I'm in the truck, uh, so every once in a while the AC might kick on because it's actually pretty warm here today. Um, so if you get to a point where you can't hear me very well, just let me know. But please do go ahead and comment where you're watching from. We're going to cover a lot of things. I actually, I wrote things down when I was in the waiting room. Um, and I'm just going to touch on on them briefly because I know people that hop on this live broadcast later probably want to just know, hey, real quick, what are these issues? What are these mistakes? And I, I want to be respectful of people's time. I'm going to go into a lot of detail. I'm going to ask questions or answer questions, excuse me. But for those of you that just want to know the quick stuff, I get it. Okay, so we're going to cover uh, how people generally have a tad too much in the way of sweeteners, like uh, artificial sweeteners, things like that during their fast. So we'll talk about how that works. Uh, we'll talk about how people have a tad too many calories in one sitting after they break their fast. A very common beginner mistake. Uh, we'll talk about how to kind of mitigate that issue. And uh, then we'll talk a little bit about taking specific vitamins during a fast and how it can actually mess things up. And then we'll talk about uh, consecutive days of fasting and how sometimes that can throw people off. Okay, then we'll go through uh, specific creamers that are allowed and aren't allowed because that's a very common thing. We'll talk about how coffee is actually quite beneficial. So we'll cover some really cool things. Then we'll talk about exercise. We'll talk about why people do a little bit too much of specific kinds of exercise and not enough of the other. So we're talking about hit versus low intensity and things like that. And then we'll talk about fasting when you're stressed out or fasting when you're sick and when you should kind of modulate that. So we'll cover a lot of cool things here. Um, and I just wanted to touch on those so you knew what we were going to go through. Now, I've got a lot of people here, so I do want to say hello. We've got, wow, I mean, going way too fast to be able to say hello to everyone, but we've got Bosnia in the house. I see that. We've got Texas. We've got, wow, we've got the UK. We've got, this is awesome, Oklahoma, North Carolina. We've got Illinois, South Carolina. This is super, super, super awesome. So how many people here are new to fasting? Okay, if you go ahead and just comment, I am new to fasting. Because I know a lot of people that watch my channel uh, aren't necessarily new to fasting, but perhaps they um, they just wanna know the beginner mistakes still. So I'm curious who's new. So I, I wanna see, like, do we have a, a bunch of people that are relatively new? Because I think it's gonna be a great conversation if we can just get some good questions coming in. And just to give those of you that don't know me a little quick background, um, I lost over 100 pounds primarily utilizing intermittent fasting and later on the ketogenic diet as it became a little bit more of sort of my day-to-day -day plan. So anyhow, um, okay, a lot of people saying very, very new, very, very new, new to fasting. Great. Well, welcome to the channel, first of all, and welcome to learning about fasting because there's a lot of different things that we can cover. Um, everyone, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button because that lets YouTube know, hey, people are watching this broadcast. This is a good one. Let's go ahead and make sure we serve it to the rest of Thomas's audience. Um, so that really helps if you just hit that thumbs up button. Really do appreciate it. Well, let's go ahead and let's dive in. Let's go have some fun with this. Okay, so the first one, like I wrote down in my little list of ones I wanna cover, is going to be having too much in the way of sweeteners. Now, this sounds like an obvious thing, right? Like we, we don't really wanna be having, of course, sugar. We don't wanna be having calories. But you see a lot of people having a lot of diet sodas. They even have things like uh, Zevias and, and things like Stevia-based sweeteners, and which, mind you, are okay to have during a fast now and then but a lot of times people lean on them too much. So I wanna just advise people that are getting started with intermittent fasting or are new to intermittent fasting to just be cognizant of the fact that uh, particularly sucralose and particularly one called aspart um, oh, aspartame, but then uh, acesulfame potassium. So when you look on a label, it's gonna say ACE-K or acesulfame potassium. If you see that on a label, be very, very concerned because studies have shown that acesulfame potassium triggers what is called a cephalic insulin response or cephalic, depending who you ask, right? What that means is that it's so hyper sweet on the palate, on the tongue, that it triggers the pancreas to produce insulin. So we have to be very, very careful with that. So I see people that are doing intermittent fasting, but they'll drink Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi or Diet Mountain Dew throughout the day. And I totally understand it. I get it. 
Um, and it, it's a step in the right direction to at least be reducing the food intake and going that route. But I just want you to know that when you are fasting, the primary goal is to get your insulin levels nice and low so that your body kickstarts other hormonal processes that do not kick in unless insulin levels are lower. So when you have these kind of mystery sweeteners and things like that, where we don't quite know how the body's responding, it can trigger a response. So I'm not saying 86 them all together. I'm just saying be very, very cautious. And I would say the safest one that's out there is monk fruit right now. The reason that I say that is because monk fruit doesn't cause an insulin response. There's even question that stevia might trigger a small insulin response. Now, again, I'm talking to a lot of newbies here, and I know there's some people that aren't newbies, but I want to make sure that I'm not going too deep in the science here, and I don't want you to get hung up on things. Um, what I would say is if you're new to fasting, limit it to one diet soda, okay? That's just a great place to start with the goal of getting yourself off of them altogether because you will find that the cravings go away altogether when those things start to wean off. So if I'm fasting and I'm going to have something sweet, it's usually going to be stevia, but lately I've been gearing more towards monk fruit just because the science is starting to point a little bit more towards monk fruit as being a slightly better option. But I will say fasting tends to get better results. I tend to get better results with fasting when I'm not really even having any sweeteners whatsoever. But sucralose and acyl sulfate and potassium on a label, do not touch it if you can avoid it. That's really, really important. Um, someone asked what my take on Swerve is. I'll just touch on this really quick. Swerve is stevia plus erythritol. Uh, I would not recommend consuming it during a fast. So erythritol is questionable because erythritol technically by definition is a sugar alcohol. And because it's a sugar alcohol, um, it doesn't technically absorb or metabolize, but to some degree it does because it causes an osmotic effect where it draws water into your colon. So that means it's changing processes in your body and it could trigger some hepatic liver activation, which is what we're kind of trying to avoid and trying to be cautious of, okay? So just be careful and have that stuff after your fast altogether. Um, just to note, you probably noticed, and you probably, if you watch my videos all the time, you might notice it all the time, but I put a link down below um, Thrive Market, big sponsor of my channel. They make this channel possible, to be quite honest. Uh, I've created like fasting boxes with them. So there's a link down below that has like foods and things like that that Thomas recommends after you break a fast. So after you're done watching this broadcast, don't do it right now. Just letting you know there's a link down there where you can kind of get groceries that I would recommend and stuff like that. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it later on. Um, Hey, what's going on in Denton, Texas? Nice to see you here. Uh, what about three-day water fast, Eric asks. A little bit more of an advanced question for this particular topic, but I'll touch on it briefly. Three-day fasts, you're really going for a different result. You're going for longevity. You're not necessarily going for the fat loss goals, although you'll get some. Uh, so I recommend focusing on really keeping it clean there. Guys, hit that thumbs up button, please. Just really appreciate it. It really would help um, simply because YouTube looks at this content as, hey, who's liking it? Who's enjoying it? Uh, and that way they get it out to my audience more. So thank you. Appreciate that, guys. Uh, someone asked about branched chain amino acids. Branched chain amino acids will break a fast. Uh, again, I want to I want to resist the urge to go down these kind of nuancy areas, at least until the end, because I know I, I, I want to be respectful of people's time. So number two that I had written down here, uh, having too many calories in one sitting after your fast, okay? Some of you, okay, I mean, this channel is growing fast, right? This channel... Um, is growing a few thousand subscribers per day. So uh, not everyone here has seen my videos talking about being careful after breaking a fast. But a lot of times what people will do is they'll break their fast and they'll have a huge amount of calories in one sitting. And they'll say, well, as long as my calories for the day are less than what they normally are, I'm going to lose weight. Well, let's say that was totally true. Even if that was true and you were losing weight in the short term, what happens when you consume so many calories at once is it triggers a pretty severe metabolic inflammatory response. And what that means is your body is suddenly having to process a lot. Think about your computer for a second. If you were to have video editing software open while also watching a movie, while also, um, I don't know, playing a video game, while also emailing, your computer would run pretty slow and it might even crash, right? Well, I want you to consider your metabolism, right? We're not superhuman. I would argue that computers are probably even more superhuman than we are to some degree. And if computers were crashed, wouldn't we crash? So we just don't want to be having a bunch of stuff come in at once. And what I usually recommend is keeping it under 
like four or five total ingredients that are coming in when you're breaking a fast. So there's there's experts out there that swear up and down that the more ingredients that come in at one sitting, the more your body has difficulty. Simple example is if you look at a label and it has 20 different things in it. Uh, that's 20 different directions your body has to go. And when you start watching my channel more and you start kind of understanding how the body works, you realize that there's enzymatic processes and gene expression and different genetic things that go on for literally every single nutrient that we put in our body and every single ingredient. And when we start breaking things down into, wow, we've got uh, benzoyl peroxide, we've got this, we've got that, we've got this, we've got that, body has to go a thousand different directions. Well, think about it from the sake of you just finished a fast. Well, the garbage man's here, so we might hear some noise. Uh, you just broke a fat. You're just you're finishing up a fast. So your insulin levels, your body's so sensitive, right? Your body just wants to just absorb whatever you take in. But suddenly you take in a bunch of food all at once, and you just consume like 1,500 calories in one sitting. What that's going to do is that's going to trigger an inflammatory cascade in your body just to process that food. So even if hypothetically you were to still lose weight that way you would cause such an inflammatory response down the line that you could trigger metabolic distress three months from now, especially if that became a consistent thing. So what do you do? What's the alternative? What's what, If you don't want to eat, just eat a bunch of food right at the end of the fast, then what do you do? I always say, just like Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. With a fast, your body becomes a powerhouse. And if you feed it properly and you just give it a couple small bits of food it's going to process it a lot better okay it's going to be able to handle that food so i recommend lean protein and possibly a little bit of carbohydrates if uh, if you're not doing keto or anything like that uh wow, we got some great questions coming in though uh what if i drink soda water on a fast yes that's okay natural flavors tough tough one to answer because natural flavors can be a lot of different things natural flavors can be uh they can technically have calories and they can technically be extracted from things that are highly, highly processed. So you do have to be very careful with that. Um, sorry, I'm looking at some of the questions that are coming in here. Um, thank you, I appreciate all the kind words. Um, does it make you feel really fatigued after breaking the fast? Please answer. If you have a lot of food at once, yes. And that's a great way to indicate that you're having too many calories. If at the end of your fast, you end up feeling super fatigued after you eat, it's a great indicator that your body is overworking, okay? You shouldn't feel super lethargic after you eat. It's just not the way that it should be unless you really stuff yourself. Um, so anyhow, we've got more questions coming in, but we also have these things that I have to answer uh, when I go through the big mistakes, right? So we've covered having too much diet soda or having too many sweeteners, okay? We've covered that one. Appreciate you guys all sticking through, uh, through this with me. And please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to comment where you're watching from. Okay, then we cover too many calories in one sitting. The next one is a tricky one. It's taking antioxidants and vitamins during a fast. Now, there's a lot of nuances with this one, a lot. And I can't go into super, super detail because it's going to freak everyone out. Okay, but here's the very simple explanation. And when people start um, asking you about your intermittent fasting lifestyle, these are good questions for you to know answers to. What you are trying to do is trigger controlled stress within your body, okay? So you're trying to cause some stress so that your body is forced to adapt. That's the benefit of fasting. Yes, there's fat loss, but that's just an adaptation. What you're trying to go after is when you abstain from food, your body has no choice but to engage these adaptations adaptations, these adaptive mechanisms to basically make you stronger. And that's why it's so good for your metabolism, why it's so good for strength, why it's so good for muscle mass, because your, your metabolism is getting adaptive. We have natural, very natural antioxidant properties. Okay. We have superoxide dismutase. We have glutathione peroxidase. We have um, MDR. We have all these different things that get rid of bad stuff like reactive oxygen species they get rid of the oxidative stress that we would normally take an antioxidant to get rid of those things typically upregulate a little bit when we're fasting and it forces them to get stronger okay so our immune system gets stronger with a fast because we force it to get stronger because we deprive it so during the fasting period itself we are actually somewhat weak but after the fast, we get a lot stronger. So if we take an antioxidant, we're giving ourselves a crutch. Okay, we're, we're making the fast at a cellular level become easier. 
And we don't really want to do that. You're not going to notice a difference or not if you take vitamin C during your fast. But studies have shown that taking vitamin C during a fast actually hurts some of the autophagy benefits of the fast. The same thing goes with antioxidants. So there's only a few things that I recommend taking in way of supplementation, and that's going to be caffeine, that's going to be magnesium, and that's going to be potassium. And even people will like an argument with magnesium, but magnesium doesn't cut down the fat burning effect. That's very complex stuff, and I'm not going to even touch it on this video, but I do talk about it in other videos. Let's answer a couple questions. Uh, Sarah says, autophagy after how many hours of fasting? widely varies on how fat adapted you are, how much you've been eating before, but I would generally say it starts to kick in around 12 hours. Uh, fish oil do not take during a fast, asks Scott Wright. Uh, no, I recommend taking that later on after you've broken your fast because it's, uh, it's oil, there's calories. Am I in a Costco parking lot? No, I'm actually in my office parking lot. Uh, they're doing some construction in my office because in case if you've been following my channel, you've probably seen I'm expanding the gym area uh, for my own selfish reasons. I don't train people in the gym. I don't it's not even open to the public. I just, um, we move some office stuff around to make some more space. I've got a new baby girl coming in May and I wanted to be able to have just more flexibility to work out with my wife once the baby comes. So anyway, they're doing a lot of work in there. So I'm in our parking lot. Um, sorry, lots of good questions. Uh, what about cold medicine? Well, actually, believe it or not, I don't know if you have the time to stick with me through this whole broadcast, but I'm going to cover that later on. Okay. I do want to say once again, just, you know, part of it's as a thank you, part of it's as, um, just you know realistically applicable you'll see down below in the description i put a link to thrive market as just so you know they're like the title sponsor of my channel so you'll see them all the time but they're it's not like it's they're there because they're a grocery store and i can talk about all kinds of different foods so anyway there's a link down below I'm able to create fasting boxes and keto boxes and everything through thrive market so you can get grocery Lauer recommends. So after you watch this live broadcast, feel free to check them out down below in the description. Zero pressure, no obligation. This isn't a sales video. I just like to mention it because they support the heck out of this channel. And um, even if you don't like them, you don't like me, they at least allow, allow me to keep doing content. I want to keep moving on. Um, so actually, someone asked a great question. Is breaking a fast with a whey protein isolate okay? If you don't have an issue with whey, then yes, it's absolutely fine. Hey, if you're just hopping on here, don't forget to comment where you're watching from too, okay? And then also, uh, please do go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. So right now, if you just hop on here, we've covered number one mistake. Or these are in no particular order. One mistake, too much diet soda or sweeteners. Uh, two, too many calories in one sitting, predominantly when you break your fast or just in one sitting in general. Uh, three, taking antioxidants during a fast. Now let's cover number four, which is a mistake that a lot of people make, uh, fasting more than two days in a row. Now, I've recently changed a little bit of my mindset on this. I used to say, do not fast any back-to-back -back days whatsoever. However, I realized I was hurting a lot of people that would normally get some serious benefit um, if they could fast back-to-back -back days. And the reason I say that is because I was scaring them by saying, hey, don't fast back-to-back -back because you're going to slow down your metabolism. Now, I've kind of altered my way of thinking in terms of like, if you're a beginner, and you're only fasting for 16 hours and you're only fasting you know, shorter amounts of time like that, you're okay to fast two days in a row. You're okay to fast probably even three days, but I usually like to say, let's set a rule, two days in a row, then give yourself a break. Then two days in a row, give yourself a break. And the reason that I say that is because I don't know your metabolism. I don't know exactly how your body's working, but I can talk about what I've seen in thyroid levels. I can talk about what I've seen um, in metabolic adaptations. And generally speaking, if you start fasting too much, you do slow your metabolism down. Is that bad? It depends who you ask. A slower metabolism isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're fat adapted and you can get by with eating less. But what the concern is, is that if you're doing intermittent fasting as a weight loss tool and not as a lifestyle, you run a concern, you're, you're, there is a concern I should say, of developing this kind of a addiction to it where you need it in order to even maintain. So you have to be very, very careful with that. So what I would usually recommend is saying, okay, if you're going to be doing that kind of fasting, just go two days on, one day off, two days on, one day off. And if you're fasting longer than 16 or 18 hours, um, then I really recommend alternate day fasting. Fast 20 hours. Hey, there goes my neighbor. Okay. Fasting 20 hours, then take a day off. Fast 20 hours, take a day off. Okay. It, it just... I will say, for the people that are more advanced that watch this channel, yes, 
are there ways to get around that? Are there ways to do consecutive days of fasting? Absolutely, absolutely. But remember, I'm trying to talk predominantly to the beginner crowd here to make sure that they just know that if you want to have longevity with this kind of diet, then, or this should say this timing system, you want to make sure you're paying attention to that, okay? Um, what about fasting for hypothyroidism, asks Ron. That's a great question. Um, it's still very effective at helping you lose weight, but you need to just take extra precaution there. Um, Hen Jur said, have you ever wrote a book? I'm actually in the process of writing a book on Mediterranean uh, low-carb diet, not even necessarily keto, but Mediterranean low-carb. Uh, that should release hopefully the end of this year, writing it with a couple um, people from Oxford University and stuff. So anyway, um, let's see. Some other questions here. Uh, can you drink uh, water, lemon during a fast? Yes, you can. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I've got some great questions that came in. Pea protein to break a fast. Frank, yes, I definitely recommend pea protein to break a fast. Uh, does black coffee still cause an insulin response? I'm going to cover coffee, so can you stick with me for that for a little bit, and we'll kind of get going on it. Um, Wow, there's some great questions. I've been fasting pretty much every day for about one and a half years. Is that bad? Well, you're probably adapted to it, but the question is, you know, and this is somewhat rhetorical, are you still seeing a response? Okay, are you still seeing a, a cosmetic response? So again, you ask yourself, what is your goal? Is your goal to improve longevity or is your goal to lose weight? If your goal is to lose weight, you definitely want to fast periodically. If it's just longevity and you're cool with just reducing calories overall and it's your lifestyle and it's what you plan to do, by all means, I think you're fine. Um, okay, so just to recap, guys, can we, anyone that is getting some value out of this video, I would just appreciate um, sharing it, okay? Like if you can share it with your friends, share it with your family, because I feel like although this winds on because it's a live broadcast and not everyone's gonna have the full amount of time to watch this, I just, I think it's a great, somewhat informal way for people to learn um, the benefits of intermittent fasting, but also just the common problems, right? Okay, so we covered too much diet, uh, a diet soda, I see that, too many calories in one sitting. Uh, we covered taking antioxidants during a fast, and then we covered fasting for more than two days in a row. And now it's time to move on to the next one. Uh, people make the mistake of adding creamer to their coffee. I know, I know, It's it seems like it's such a negligible amount of calories that it wouldn't really cause a big problem, but it does. Um, okay, coffee, is one to two, one to three calories really, black coffee. And tea is kind of in the same ballpark, one to two calories. Well, why can you consume coffee and tea that has technically a couple calories, but why can't you have the creamer? Well, here's why. Because the coffee and the tea have additional benefits that override the one or two calories. It actually takes more calories to burn coffee than is in coffee. Because what happens is when you consume coffee, it elevates a couple of different things. It elevates, of course, hormones like, um, or catecholamines, I should say, like uh, adrenaline and things like that, which are the master regulators at the end of the day of fat burning. But it also triggers what's called AMPK, okay, which is basically your body's internal switch that says it's time to burn stored fat. The other thing is there's something called a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Phosphodiesterase inhibition means that it turns off the barrier to your body being able to tap in to fat, uh, fat burning mechanisms. So you kind of have this barrier that's up in your body. And if you visualize it like that, there's this barrier that says, hey, it's not time to stop to tap into our stored tissue because it's not safe to do so. And that phosphodiesterase is really that barrier. Coffee actually drops that barrier. So coffee kind of breaks down the Berlin wall, if you want to call it that. And that's what's unique about coffee is, yes, it has a couple of calories, but it breaks down that barrier. So creamers cause a problem simply because there's usually a few calories in those at least. Like if you're going to put two tablespoons of creamer in, you're looking at anywhere from 20 to 60 calories, sometimes more. That is enough to kick you out of a fasted state. And yes, believe it or not, if you are somewhat scientific and you, you grasp this, um, fat still causes an insulin response, just not as much. It does so indirectly through what's called acylation stimulating protein, which is stimulated the fat. So anyhow, for those of you that were questioning that. Um, so I usually would say, you know, and I just did a, a video, I recorded a video, it hasn't gone live yet, that shows that when you do any kind of, um, have any kind of coffee, you have to have more than 500 milligrams of caffeine to truly um, dehydrate you. So you're okay to have coffee, go throughout the day. Uh, D Red Fighter says, love your channel, Thomas, just wanted to ask for a lean protein source that isn't fish since I'm allergic. That pink golden omelet looks so good. Um, usually just lean chicken or really lean 96% beef uh, would be good. Like that's about as lean as you can usually find it. 
Uh, so anyhow, when we go back to the coffees and the creamers, people will say, well, I want to do a bulletproof coffee thing. I want to do, uh, I want to add MCT oil to my coffee. MCT don't confuse keto and fasting, okay? I mean, just because I know a lot of people here want to fast that don't do keto, and I have a lot of people on my channel that do keto and don't fast, and I have a whole lot of people that do keto plus fasting. Although they're very similar in a lot of ways, I don't want you to get them confused during the process. Just because MCT oil triggers ketone production does not mean that it's going to help you out in burning more fat. It doesn't work like that. Okay, MCT oil is still very caloric, it's still going to break a fast and it still will make you fat if you have a lot of it, a lot of it, right? So it's not safe. It's not safe to have during a fast. You have it whenever other, other time you want to have it, okay? But same kind of thing, with, even if you have 10 calories with an almond milk, okay, you're throwing off that metabolic process. You require digestive enzymes. Now, I want you to remember this, okay? If you have, let's say you have your house and you have a party at your house, okay, and you have 25 people at your house and then the janitor or the maid comes in uh, to try to clean the house but there's 25 people there having a party they're gonna have a hard time cleaning up okay I want you to think of that like your body when you're eating you have people at the party because you have food coming okay now the party's over everybody leaves including you you go on vacation and the house is empty then the maids come in it's a lot easier for the maids to clean up the house now right yeah because no one's there to make a mess. But that's exactly what's happening when you're fasting. Okay, the maids are coming in, they're able to clean up cellular processes and cellular waste, trigger autophagy, allow cellular membranes to heal, allow the intestinal lumen to heal, allow us to feel great and feel bright and feel fresh, right? Now imagine in this particular instance that the maids are cleaning the house, but then uh, two toddlers, little guys, two little toddlers, run into the house, tracking mud in, making a mess, that's gonna slow down the maid's ability to clean that house. Maybe not as much as if there was 25 people, but if two messy toddlers are gonna to come in there, they're gonna clean, make it dirty, right? Okay, I rest my case. The same things happen inside your body. If it's five calories of crud, body's gotta clean it up, it's gotta work with it. Does that make sense to everybody? Just go ahead and, and say, yes, that makes sense. Um, so anyhow, I just wanna make sure yeah, uh, Brooke says, I know Dr. Berg teaches that you can have heavy cream in coffee and it won't break a fast. Dr. Berg talks about that from the sense of just sustainability, okay? Um, and I'm well aware of that. He and I have talked about that. It, but it, dairy especially triggers hormonal responses within your body. Dairy is somewhat estrogenic. And one of the things that I – reason, and again, it's perfectly okay. Like Dr. Berg and I have a couple small things that we don't 100% agree on. And then there's – but we were friends, like we're really good friends. And the thing is, is that that's the beauty of this is you have to go with like different things that, that you can understand. I appreciate fasting because of what it does from a hormonal standpoint. And just for reference, like for any of the females that are watching, you know, a lot of the reason I got into fasting was to help my wife reset her hormones. She ba has battled with hormonal issues and, um, you know, estrogen dominance and a lot of issues for a while and it was fasting and keto that really helped her. So anyhow, I, I digress. I don't want to go too far on that. And now that we have, you know, have a lot of new people hopping on, can we go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, comment where you're watching from. Uh, Jan, I'm glad you appreciate the uh, analogies. That's what I really try to be good at. I'm not a doctor. I mean, I, I just, I've been around the block with this stuff. Guys, don't forget also just as kind of an, a token of appreciation for this channel if you can after you watch this video you don't have to but i did put a link down to thrive market below um they are the title sponsor of this channel because they're a grocery store and they make it possible so when i do a live broadcast yes i mention them a few times because people come and go so i put a link down below that way you can check out thrive market get my fasting box get my keto box um i appreciate the heck out of them because quite frankly i, I this channel wouldn't be able to survive if it wasn't for the support of brands like that. So anyhow, let's move on to the next one. Just for those of you that just came on here, we covered number one, too much diet sodas and sweeteners. Number two was too many calories in one sitting. Number three was taking antioxidants during a fast. And number four was fasting more than two days in a row. And then we just covered number five, which is adding creamer to coffee. And we talked about how coffee is good. Consume coffee. It will help your fast. Okay. Um, now, okay, number six, this one has the potential to get very complicated, <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep some, and I'm kind of sweating in here. This is kind of weird. Well, I have the AC, like, it's it's warm. It's like almost 90 degrees here in SoCal today in February, which is crazy. It's not what we want. We need the rain. Uh, so I'm sitting in my car because they're doing some construction inside, and 
I don't want to crank the AC up too much because then you guys will hear it. You won't be able to hear me. So I'm kind of sweating in here a little bit. So anyhow, let's keep going. So we're talking about workouts. What kind of workouts should you be doing during your fast and what common mistakes do I see? Well, I see two big mistakes. I see one mistake being people don't move at all. They think this is a fasting day, so I'm not burning calories, so I'm okay to, or excuse me, I'm not consuming calories, so I'm okay to not burn extra calories. Well, if you're not consuming calories, that sounds like a phenomenal time to me to get an extra workout in and get a little bit extra calorie burn, right? Like even if it's just 100 calories, that's 100 calories that you're going to just be able to incinerate. So I do recommend getting moving because it's also going to allow all these different mobilizations of fats to occur. It's going to allow PPAR alpha to, to really activate the or, or to a, the liberation of fatty acids are going to activate PPAR alpha, which sends all kinds of just genetic cascades and gene transcription and all this cool stuff great just metabolic health stuff that again is probably advanced for this beginner video but great stuff if you want to dive into it on my channel further now I feel like a lot of times people end up doing too much in the way of the high intensity work though okay I'm okay with it but here's the caveat here's what you have to remember and this is just very important this where there's a clear line of what one person should do and what another person should do so please if I was talking to my toddler right now, I'd say, ears, okay, ears. I need your ears for a second. If you have a strong athletic background, okay, if you have someone that is uh, works out regularly, someone that has a decent amount of muscle, someone that works out more than three days per week already, you are someone that can handle doing higher intensity weight training and higher intensity interval training during your fast because you have the anaerobic capacity and your body's going to have what is called glycogen. It's going to have stored carbohydrates that are okay for that fuel. Uh, you'll be able to handle it. If you are someone that does not work out more than three days per week or you would consider yourself a beginner, which is absolutely fine and no one has to comment whether they're a beginner or not. It's just, you know, keep that to yourself. Then you should only be focusing on cardio. And when I say cardio, I mean low intensity cardio on your fasting days. Remember this. When you are fasting, you're mobilizing fats. When you are doing cardio, you're burning fats. So what we always want to do is mobilize fats via nutritional protocols and then burn fats via activity. Okay. Remember, the deprivation of food itself doesn't burn fat. The deprivation of food releases the fat. You still have to burn it. Okay. So go for a gentle walk and but don't do too much hit because then what's going to happen is you trigger a lot of stress on your body and the stress in this case will actually slow down your progress because you jack up your cortisol too high. But it's going to lead into the next thing that I'm going to talk about here and it's very, very, very important. So I've done a lot of videos talking about workouts and fasting and after this video, feel free by all means to just type in on YouTube, Thomas DeLauer fasting workouts, things like that because it's just so complex. I don't want to be able to, um, I don't want to just lose a lot of people here. I want to keep this simple and succinct. So anyhow, can we, uh, I know a lot of people are jumping on here now. We've got some new people coming on. Um, let's see, some good questions. Uh, so it says, nice shirt. Thank you, I appreciate that. Is it okay for me to eat all my carbs in one sitting as a meal? I usually focus on eating carbs. I would not recommend that. Um, I would not recommend eating all your meals in one sitting. And someone says, what about melatonin to help me sleep after I fast? Um, I would recommend going for magnesium instead of melatonin. I think someone answered that as well. Uh, breaking your fast with oats and fruit. Uh, Drake, obviously uh, you're probably not doing keto in this case. I would recommend keeping the fruit out of the equation. Uh, and if you do have the fruit in there, do it to a minimum quarter cup and try to do something like berries, okay? Um, yeah, someone saw something. mental health, very important. Intermittent fasting with gastric bypass. Uh, nothing's really going to change, to be completely honest. Um, I know you always say never to combine fats and carbs. What about low glycemic carbs? Yeah, you're going to be better off. And I don't want to confuse a lot of the audience here talking about the combination of fats and carbs. But uh, typically speaking, generally, you want to avoid combining fats and carbohydrates because it just it can throw things off. Basically, it spikes your insulin and allows the fat to store. Because I know you know we've had cumulatively, I can see in my little ticker, we've had like over 11,000 people come through this broadcast and I know not everyone hits the thumbs up button but I really appreciate it if you guys could just hit that like button it really does help this channel out a lot um, okay then 
Uh, Flaming Mo says, can I use refined coconut oil as MCT or is there a difference? Uh, there is a difference between coconut oil and MCT. However, I recommend going with coconut oil over MCT. MCT doesn't have any real nutritional profile. It's a medium chain fat that breaks down really easy. That's great, but it's, it's just it's just that. There's no nutritional profile to it. Whereas when you look at um, the saturated fat that's in coconut oil, you have a lot of benefits. You have, you have a lauric acid, which is the C12. Lauric acid provides a tremendous microbial benefit, so I recommend that. Plus you have about 15% MCTs, and then you have other long chain fats in there that are still very, very effective. So I recommend coconut oil over MCTs. Um, okay, let's talk about number seven super important here um, that is people make the mistake of fasting when they're sick or they fast when they're stressed out okay um, I'm gonna answer this one question because it was a super chat first off thank you for all you do our family has benefited greatly this may be a tough subject what are your thoughts on um, honestly I have to even be careful saying that word because YouTube will actually flag it uh, but you know what I'm talking about uh, because it came up in super chat I would say uh, yes it does help and then Diana Torres says, can you tell us which milk we should use to break the fast with our pea protein, coconut, hemp, or flax? I personally love hemp simply because it's it's a full spectrum. Uh, hemp milk with pea protein would be phenomenal. Anyhow, I want to go ahead and uh, answer or go through this last one, which was fasting with sick or stress. So remember how I said fasting is the purpose of fasting is to get your body stressed. It's to get your body stressed so that you ultimately burn more fat and you ultimately develop more strength at the cellular level okay when you are sick you will get more sick if you fast fasting is not designed to do to be used when you're already sick it's designed to boost your immune system before you get sick if you do not fuel your body with what it needs predominantly protein when you're sick your body will have a hard time recovering and it will not likely pull from fat it will likely pull from protein from your muscles and your joints when you're sick. So if you feel yourself getting sick, you shouldn't eat more, but you should just eat clean because fasting is going to put stress on your body. It is designed to be stressful. And the last thing you want to do is stress yourself when you know you're getting sick. So it's tempting to want to fast because you feel like it's cleaning your body, but it's cleaning different things. It's not fighting a virus. Okay. If we were going to war, if soldiers were going to war, we wouldn't say, hey, this is the time that we want to clean your barracks and we're going to call in the troops to clean the barracks. We're going to say, no, we need to fuel you guys up so you can go and fight, right? That's the same thing that's happening in the body. You got to support your immune system. Same thing when you're stressed, okay? When you're really, really, really stressed, you're immunocompromised. You just don't know it because the reason you don't feel it is because when you're stressed, you have adrenaline and adrenaline masks everything. So you don't feel the stress. You don't feel the, your body's. How many times have you ever just had a crazy day and then you get home and all of a sudden, the second you sit down on the couch and relax, you're crash, you're done. But it's like, I didn't even know I was tired happens to me all the time because I guess the adrenaline of the day, like I'm just rocking and rolling and then I get home and the kid and, you know, and a pregnant wife and everything's crazy. And then I sit down for 30 minutes to watch a show on Netflix and I'm like, boom, out. My wife's like, you can never even last through a 15 minutes of a show. It's because my adrenaline's going and I fall asleep. That's still happening. So you just got to be careful there. Um, integrity construction says sugar-free monster kicks you out of ketosis. Uh, if it has BCAAs, it can. Uh, Sandy D says, uh, lost 45 kilograms of intermittent fasting, how to break a five day fast the same way you would break in regular intermittent fast lean protein. Uh, there was another question that came in via super chat supplements to take to combat soreness, but not break keto, a creatine alternative. Well, creatine is technically okay to take during a fast. So you'd be okay. But remember protein synthesis stays elevated for a long period of time for 24 hours after your workout. So you don't have to take a supplement to try to recover better. You'll be fine. Um, so many good questions. Uh, Mr. J says, what about bubbles? I'm assuming you're talking about carbonated beverages. And if it's carbonated water, you're fine. It's not going to elicit any additional um, response or anything like that. Guys, for those of you just hopping on, um, please do when you get a chance to check out Thrive Market at the end of this video or whenever you're done watching. I linked them down, down below. Big sponsor of this channel. But like I've said before, I've been able to assemble these little boxes of my favorite groceries for intermittent fasting, for keto, for uh, thyroid health, hormone optimization. It's just a cool thing. I can pick the groceries and anyway, special link down below. Creatine with keto and fasting, is it good or bad? Neither. Uh, just know that you're going to retain water from it. And then we've got uh, 
Yeah, some good questions. Glutamine after a workout, unnecessary. Uh, Marcella says, hey, Thomas, for the last couple of weeks, my ketone levels have been unusually high, four to five. I've been exercising less for these last two weeks. Um, oh, yeah, that's totally normal. If you exercise less, your ketone levels will go higher because when you exercise, you burn through those ketones, plain and simple. And you also elevate your cortisol levels. You elevate uh, adrenaline, which can a lot of times also elevate more cortisol, chain reaction, elevates glucose. It's plain and simple. I noticed that too. On my rest days, I have higher ketones than my workout days. Does green detox break the fast, uh, Stefan? Uh, yes, it does. Hey, just FYI, um, I used to work with that company. You're going to probably see the ads all over this place. They're still marketing it with my name, even though they've changed the formula. Um, so I love those guys over at Six Pack Abs. They're good guys, except for the fact that right now um, they've changed the formula and they're still marketing a product with my name. So the Green Detox is not really my product, even though they're using my name. The things that come with having a brand, I guess. Um, don't really want to go down that hole. I love those guys. They're a good company. They have good products, but they did change that formula and it technically wouldn't really be Tom Stellar approved anymore. That's dirty laundry. Let's not go there. Um, they're honestly good guys. It's just the, the formula is different from what I would want. Um, juicing and proteins are easier to digest uh, to some degree. Can I do EAA, EAAs on fasting? No, because you still have leucine, which will is the big one. Anything, if you look at a label and it says leucine, so like bang energy drinks, um, has leucine, uh, rain energy drinks have leucine, you gotta be careful with that. Uh, Natasha says, do you still recommend MCT oil to break a fast if we're only worried about weight loss? No, keep it lean protein, good to go there. Uh, Gawain says, Thomas Lauer, hey, fasting brings cortisol, cortisol makes you store fat, right? Also how to change your workout. That's such a good question. Fasting does elevate cortisol. Cortisol will not make you store fat unless cortisol is in conjunction with insulin. So cortisol is only going to cause a problem if you have it alongside food. So what you want to do is you want to go through a cortisol mitigation strategy. I always recommend before you break your fast to try to get yourself relaxed. Okay, I lose a lot of people when I talk about this, but you can always try meditating. You can always try doing a little bit of yoga before you break your fast. There are lots of epidemiological studies and also lots of anecdotal studies and some concrete clinicals that show that like things like yoga bring your cortisol levels down. Do I do that? I don't anymore. There was a time period where I'm really stressed um, because I would try to do a little yoga to bring my stress levels down before I break a fast. And I would honestly say my results were better. They honestly were. Um, my opinion on perfect keto bars. Uh, I actually think they do a really good job. I love perfect keto. I actually, they're a sponsor on this channel too. So I talk about them uh, mainly like their collagen and stuff like that. I do talk about their bars, but there's still some tapioca in there. So use them in moderation. Does matcha with cinnamon break a fast? Uh, Technically, no. You're good. What are my thoughts with uh, water stevia or sorry, two tablespoons ACV in water? You're okay with that. ACV is okay. Good to go. Uh, thoughts on the OMAD diet. I love the OMAD diet, but I also feel like if you can modify OMAD just a tiny bit to have a small meal when you break your fast and then an hour later have your larger meal, I think that's better. The problem we have with OMAD is like I talked about earlier in this video is that uh, you have so many nutrients coming at you from one angle at one time, right? So many different angles. So you just got to be careful with that. Um, Thrive Market is not available in Canada. Unfortunately, I think they're working on it. I recommend otherwise uh, uh, Natura Market, N-A-T-U-R-A. -A. It's similar to Thrive, but it's can, can, kind of Canada's version there. Um, and then let's see, sorry, uh, lots of good questions coming in. Do you eat carbs after an 18 hour fast? It depends. So even me who follows a, typically follows a ketogenic lifestyle most of the time, I can break a fast with carbohydrates and I'll be back in keto in 45 minutes. So one thing that's very important because I know we have a lot of new people to my channel on this live broadcast right now. Um, I am by no means anti-carb. I mean, I think carbs have their place. And I think especially if you are someone that's maintaining muscle, that carbs work well intermittently. You just don't need to have them all the time. So like, yeah, sometimes I'll break a fast and play around with having some carbs. Are eggs okay to break a fast? I would not because eggs can be questionable when it comes down to the inflammatory response. I usually recommend pea protein. I usually recommend a really lean kind of meat. Um, I usually recommend like a chicken or a lean ground chicken or a lean ground turkey, um, pea protein, uh, hemp protein. Uh, whey protein, if you can handle it. Uh, I have some things down again in my Thrive box down below the link that I would recommend breaking a fast with. Cordyceps or lion's mane while fasting. Yeah, especially lion's mane. Cordyceps does have some ATP activation, so you kind of have to be careful with cordyceps, but uh, lion's mane is definitely good to go. Um, let's see, is eating too much soya, like tofu, bad? Yes, it is, uh, no matter if it's organic or not. 
low carb, no leucine protein shake to break a fast. Well, no, you can, no, a protein shake is going to have leucine. Leucine is an amino acid. So it's an amino acid that's in protein, but it's the amino acid that is going to spike your insulin. It's okay when you break your fast because you're breaking a fast, but spiking your insulin would imply to your body that you have calories or food coming in. Um, just flavored coffee with no dairy break a fast. Now nah, you're fine. I mean, be careful of the natural flavors, but uh, how would you mix in cheat days with fasting days? Good question. Simple strategy. Fast, and then when you break your fast, keep it very controlled. Okay. So what I usually say, I talk to people all the time, people that travel, right? It happens to me. Getting on an airplane, going to a business dinner across the country, right? Okay, what, oh, I fast that day. I'm traveling, so of course I'm going to fast. So what do I do? Uh, well, when I land... Most people would say, okay, well, I'm just going to go straight to the dinner and I've been fasting all day and I'm going to feast. I'm going to enjoy this food. Yes, I deserve it. Okay, no, try to control that. Break your fast strategically. So I'll bring like a packet of pea protein with me and a shaker cup and then I will just go ahead and I'll add some water to it or whatever and I'll break my fast in a controlled fashion. Maybe a couple of rice cakes, maybe a, a baked potato that I brought with me if I'm doing carbs, otherwise just the protein shake. And then I wait. I wait an hour and then I go to the dinner. And then if I'm on a cheat meal day, sure, I'll enjoy my cheat meal. But at least I've broken my fast strategically. I hope that helps. It's a little bit of a damage control. Uh, my view on carnivore, I don't know if this is really the place for it. I think carnivore is very, very, very effective for people that need to uh, control inflammation for an acute period of time. I don't think carnivore is something you necessarily want to do long term because it is very limiting and you could potentially reduce the diversity of your gut bacteria. Can you please talk about nighttime evening workouts? Nighttime workouts are great if you can try to be try to do them in a fasted state. That's great where you just shift your eating window. But I think that's a different for a different story for a different day. Peanut butter or bacon on whole wheat toast <laughs> sounds delicious. But uh, bone broth, yes. So I don't talk about it too much, but bone broth is something that you definitely can break your fast with. Bone broth and then immediately have your protein shake. Because bone broth, although it has calories, it breaks a fast. I don't consider it a food. I consider it a I consider it almost a supplement in terms of how it works. So you can break your fast with bone broth and then kind of roll into your protein. Um, also, just so you know, I have bone broth in my fasting box that's down in Thrive Market at the link below. So do make sure you guys check that out. Again, I'm, I know I sound like a broken record, but this is a live broadcast, so I do kind of have to repeat myself. And if you knew the economics of YouTube and how this stuff works, then uh, you, you wouldn't hate on me for uh, talking about Thrive every now and then. Uh, ALA, alpha linoleic acid and fasting, uh, do not pass on it. What is a good pea protein shake? Usually a fan of uh, Sun Warrior. I talk about them just because they're super clean. So Sun Warrior brand pea protein, uh, Warrior blend is a good one. My wife wants to know if there's anything to be aware of with keto and IF while breastfeeding. So when it comes down to um, when it comes down to intermittent fasting, I wouldn't recommend intermittent fasting breastfeeding because that's too much caloric reduction. I also have to be careful. I'm not a you know I'm not a pediatrician, but I can tell you from my own personal experience. <laughs> sorry. Whoa, major flub there, right? my wife's personal experience that when she uh, gave birth to Tommy, my son, she was not keto. She went off keto like right after giving birth and her breast supply, milk supply wasn't that amazing. And then she went keto and the milk supply, the fat content like quadrupled. So the caloric value of her breast milk was amazing. So anyway, hope that helps. Um, someone says, is it okay to do a sauna or steam room while on a prolonged fast? Yes. Okay. That is a good way to enhance and exacerbate the stressful portion of your fast. So yes, I'm okay with that. Heat shock proteins are great. Sardines and extra virgin olive oil, okay regarding the omega profile. Can't find in water. Yes, if you can't find them in water, still okay. I actually have a video talking specifically about that. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and recap one more time. So we talked about too much diet sodas and sweeteners being problem number one, mistake number one. We talked about too many calories in one sitting after you break your fast. Okay, so with the diet sodas, I said if you're new to it, Limit it to one diet soda per day and try to wean off of them all together. Try to lean on monk fruit, which is going to be a little bit easier, also in my, which is in my Thrive Box, FYI. And then too many calories in one sitting. Break your fast strategically, small meal, then 60, 90 minutes later, have a bigger meal. Uh, try not to eat all your food in one sitting. Number three, taking antioxidants like uh, vitamin C and other antioxidants during your fast. Wait until right after your fast. Fasting more than two days in a row if you're a beginner. Try to take it easy and try to wait until you're a little bit more experienced before you push it like that. Number five, adding creamers to coffee. 
keep your coffee black and have as much of it as you want, quite frankly. But just know that fasting can sometimes make it harder to sleep. So you may want to cut the coffee up a little earlier than you normally would. Uh, too much high intensity interval training when you're not ready or the other side of the equation, not doing any activity. Everyone should be doing a little bit of when they're fasting because you're going to get so much more of a mobilization of fatty acids. And lastly, fasting when you're stressed out or fasting when you're sick. That is not a good recipe. Okay, your adrenals are already taxed. Guys, there is so many amazing co questions coming in here. I, I, I wish that I could answer all of them. Uh, Alan says, cheers. You're uh, very welcome for doing this, man. Um, and then appreciate, guys, there's some great, great questions. I wish I could stick here and answer all of them. It is important that everybody here knows I post videos daily, okay, every single day. Usually, uh, they usually go out at like 5.30 a.m. Pacific time, but it's very, very important you turn on notifications and you select all notifications. Um, let me tell you, unfortunately, what happens if that doesn't occur, okay? If you don't turn on notifications, what happens is you won't, it's okay, but you won't see my videos. And then what will happen is eventually YouTube will just think you're not interested in my content. So they won't show you videos even though you're subscribed to my channel and you'll have to actually navigate to my channel every day to find those videos. So please do turn on notifications. Um, it will help. It will make things a lot easier. Uh, but also just know, even if you don't turn on notifications, I am posting a video every day. So if you're not seeing a video from me every day, then uh, it means that you're you're, you're missing out because we do have that. So not that you, everyone has the time to do that, but I try to almost always keep them between like five and 10 minutes and super, super easy. So guys, I have to jump off. I've got a call here in about nine minutes and I got to prep for it a little bit with some very interesting people talking about um, what are called BFR bands, blood flow restriction. And they're kind of the, um, the leader in the science of that. So it's really interesting. Might have some cool content coming up as a result of this call in a couple of months. Um, guys, one more time. Thank you for being here and please do just do me a favor and just at least check out Thrive down below in the description. It's it's very, very helpful for this channel, but I think it'll be helpful for you too. And think about other video ideas and I'll check back in the comments a little bit later. You guys rock. See you soon.